Today we're looking at an entry level one shot colour camera from Explore Scientific. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. I wanted to share an unboxing and first impression video of this 8.3 megapixel colour camera from Explore Scientific, which is based around the Sony IMX485 sensor. The folks over at Brescia UK were kind enough to send me over a sample to test and I'll be sharing my thoughts and experiences with it over the three months that I have to play with it. For full disclosure, Brescia UK sent me the camera in an extended loan for three months and I have to return the camera after I'm finished. They haven't paid me for this review and I'm totally free to say what I want about the camera, so as ever, you'll receive my honest thoughts on it. If you want to check out any other info on the camera that I don't cover in this video, I'll include a link to Bresser's website in the description below the video, so you can go down there and check it out if you want. So let's start with a full unboxing and then we'll dive into the specs, and I'll share what I'm planning to use this camera for. In the box we've got the camera itself along with a dust cap and some included accessories. There's a one and a quarter inch plug-in adapter nose piece and I'm really pleased to see that this has a filter thread. There's also two 1.5 meter cables for the USB 3.0 port and the ST4 auto guiding port. You also get a CD with included native software, but you can download the relevant drivers on Brescia's website that I've linked to below. I'll likely be using the camera with my own preferred software though. There's also an instruction manual to help you get up and running. Now let's have a look into the specs. It's listed at £565 here in the UK and it's considered an entry level dedicated astro camera. The camera is marketed as a 12-bit planetary camera, but based on its attributes it can also function as a guide camera by using the included ST4 port. It features Sony's very popular IMX485 CMOS color sensor, which you can find on cameras from other companies like ZWO. This sensor is ideal as it provides very high light sensitivity, which helps produce bright and detailed images. This is also helped by the fact that the sensor is back illuminated. Another feature of this sensor, which is very important to us astrophotographers, is its low noise capabilities. By minimizing noise in our sub exposures, post processing becomes much easier and leads to more vibrant images. The camera also boasts 4K resolution output of up to 3840 by 2160 pixels, but depending on the targets, this can be adjusted to suit your own requirements. It's nice to have the extra headroom though. If you want to stay up to date with my astrophotography ventures from here in the UK, then please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification below so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. Thanks very much for your support, it really helps my channel to grow. In terms of physical specs, which is handy to know when you're adding the camera to your astrophotography rig, the Explore Scientific is a lightweight unit. The camera weighs in at just 300 grams, with a length of 85 millimeters and a diameter of 68 millimeters. Even though it's light, it's reassuringly solid due to its CNC aluminium construction, and it feels very high end. On the back of the camera, there's an ST4 port for letting you use the camera for guiding, but as its main function is an imaging camera, you've also got a USB 3.0 port. There's also a fan outlet to aid the camera's passive cooling system, which we'll cover now. Many larger dedicated astro cameras have active cooling fans, which can be operated via computer or any other device that you connect to your camera. By setting a specific temperature, you can make sure that the sensor is operating at the same temperature throughout your imaging sessions. This also helps when you're trying to get consistent calibration frames for your post-processing work. Cameras that have active cooling systems are particularly useful when doing long exposure imaging, when sub-exposures are typically over a minute. The longer your exposures, the more chance you have of introducing noise into your images. This camera's strengths seem to favour shorter exposure times like we use for planetary, lunar, solar and EAA imaging. In these cases, active cooling is not as crucial, and this camera has also helped along the way with the inclusion of the low noise IMX485 sensor. This camera relies on passive cooling without the inclusion of specific temperature control, but it's still a handy feature to have, and I think it'll benefit me most when I try the camera out in some solar imaging. Many other IMX485 cameras don't have any passive cooling, or you need to buy a fan attachment separately, so it's nice to see one included here as standard. Nice job, Explore Scientific. The passive cooling system can be controlled via software, so we'll see how this operates when we get to testing. Recommended operating temperatures for the camera is listed as minus 10 to plus 50 degrees Celsius, which will cover pretty much everyone's needs. Frame rates are very important, especially when imaging the planets, the moon and the sun. In very basic terms, by taking several high speed images of a target, we're able to minimize the effects of atmospheric disturbance on our targets, and this allows us to stack several thousand frames together to build up a clear image. This camera is listed as operating at around a maximum of 43 frames per second at full 4K resolution and 66 frames per second at full HD. By decreasing the resolution, you can increase the frame rate of the camera and all this can be controlled by software. There are faster cameras out there to be sure and even slower ones, but based on its price, intended applications and target customers, I think the frame rates on this camera are perfectly respectable, in my opinion anyway. We'll see how it performs in real world scenarios though, and I'll be testing this out in follow up videos, so stay tuned for those. So what am I planning with this camera? Well, I think I'll be focusing on a few areas over the next month or so to give you all an idea of how the camera performs in different scenarios. 
I'll certainly be looking to test out its lunar and solar imaging capabilities on a variety of scopes to see how the frame rate copes with these demanding targets. You may have seen from one of my previous videos that I recently built a Hyperstar rig based around the Celestron C6. If you haven't seen it, I'll link to it up here and you can go and check that out. I was planning to use this Hyperstar system for some really short exposure EAA or electronically assisted astronomy. This will allow me to stack a series of exposures in real time to build up an image over time, which I'll be featuring in some upcoming live sessions, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those. Based on its low noise capabilities, this Explore Scientific camera should be a good fit for that, so I'll report back on my progress here in a future video. I'll also see how the camera gets on with some more traditional longer exposure deep sky imaging to test out things like amp glow, noise, and other aspects of taking calibration frames. So that's my first look at the Explore Scientific 8.3 megapixel color camera. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll hopefully see you in my next video. Take care of yourselves, have a great day and clear skies to you all.